My name is Sarah Jane. I'm a mindfulness facilitator for Studio B. Welcome to this mini course on navigating change and uncertainty through the mindfulness lens. This particular talk is about reframing change, acknowledging its ubiquity and possibility. Here in the States, fires rage out west and hurricanes are forming in the Gulf, and we're still living with the pandemic. Whenever you are watching this, I suspect what I have to say will still fit, will still apply, because big events engendering change for enormous numbers of people are nothing new. There's no guarantee that life will be characterized by stability, security, certainty. In fact, the opposite is true. Each one of us in our lives will experience some measure of instability, uncertainty, and insecurity. Change is ubiquitous and not just the big kinds of change that I described, but big and small change. Change is sometimes planned, and sometimes it shows up when we least expect it, unplanned, creating a sense of instability in life, unpredictability. And change can feel welcome. It can come along and enhance life. It can really fit and improve things, or it might create friction and we feel unwelcoming toward it. Our jobs, relationships, the place we call home, our family routines, friends, our health status, these are all areas of life in which we will experience change. We will be called to adapt. Many of us resist change, and this creates unhappiness. Instead of a fruitful response and moving along with things as they are, we get wrapped up in denying reality, and we wish away what's happening. We can get stuck here, and we get stuck when we don't feel resourced, inwardly resourced or supported externally by friends, family, mentors, experts. When we're not resourced, we cannot be as fluid as we move with life's inevitable changes, inevitable ups and downs. Let's pause for a moment, each of us, you might settle into your chair, relax. You might cast your gaze downward or close your eyes. And cast your mind back to one year ago. See how things were. Move slowly forward in time. Note the gains and losses you experienced. Note the pleasures and the pains. And you can lift your gaze. The details of our lives are so very different from one another, but we share the fact that we experience change yearly, monthly, weekly, daily. It's our inheritance as humans. It's the nature of things and the way of nature. Days turn into evenings and nights. Seasons change. The Earth's crust moves, changes position, sometimes slowly, sometimes rapidly. The climate is changing far too rapidly. In fact, I have some words from journalist 
Peter Brennan on this from an article he wrote in The Atlantic. He so beautifully describes our dynamic planet. We live on a wild planet, a wobbly, erupting, ocean-sloshed orb that careens around a giant thermonuclear explosion in the void. Big rocks whiz by overhead, and here on the Earth's surface, whole continents crash together, rip apart, and occasionally turn inside out, killing nearly everything. Our planet is fickle. When the unseen tug of celestial bodies points Earth toward a new North Star, for instance, the shift in sunlight can dry up the Sahara or fill it with hippopotamuses. Of more immediate interest today, a variation in the composition of the Earth's atmosphere of as little as 0.1% has meant the difference between sweltering Arctic rainforests and a half mile of ice atop Boston. That negligible wisp of the air is carbon dioxide, as we know. And this applies to us as well. Our bodies, our lives. You know, we are born and we age, we grow and we decay. Our very lives are the ultimate expression of non-negotiable change. Now, as regular a part of life as change is, we're not very good at it. It creates discomfort and unease for us. We have uh, regret when we make a professional transition and find that the new job doesn't feel like a fit. We miss, we long for, we experience heartache about bygone relationships. We become frustrated when we make certain plans and yet things change and develop along another path. We grieve our losses. Change is stressful. So if nothing else, what I hope you take away from this is encouragement to take good care of yourself, to be kind to yourself as you are negotiating um, a shifting landscape throughout your day and your life. The Buddhist tradition from which mindfulness meditation is derived highlights change as impermanence, the insubstantiality of all things, nothing lasts. And it encourages us to become comfortable with change and the uncertainty of living in a world of constant change. Everything is impermanent. Early Buddhists, in fact, developed and taught mindfulness meditation to give people the direct experience of impermanence. And it feels a little bit like this, some words from teacher Jack Kornfield. He describes mindfulness meditation in this way. In our own direct mindfulness of our body and mind, we have sensations that feel very intense, and then they disappear. A whole play of pleasant and unpleasant sensations. We look at feelings as they arise, but then they pass away. We look at the thoughts, and there's a river of thoughts. It's like bubbles. They seem very real, and we believe them. We get inside, and we live a whole life inside of a thought. And then it's gone. And we think, what's for lunch? <laughs> so I love his sensibility. So for many, seeing impermanence and feeling how we are impermanent ourselves gives rise not to fear, but to relief. It can be, be relieving to align ourselves with reality and accept things as they are can bring a beautiful poignancy to everyday life. Meeting life on life's terms 
with curiosity and interest leads to adaptability and creativity in the way we move with things. You might even see being with change as an art. And just a few more words from another wonderful teacher, Jennifer Wellwood. She's a psychologist and she writes in her poem, The Dakini Speaks. Let's wake up and notice. Look, everything that can be lost will be lost. It's simple. How could we have missed it for so long? Let's grieve our losses fully like ripe human beings. But please, let's not be so shocked by them. Let's not act so betrayed as though life had broken her secret promise to us. Impermanence is life's only promise to us, and she keeps it with ruthless impeccability. To a child, she seems cruel, but she is only wild, and her compassion exquisitely precise. Brilliantly penetrating, luminous with truth, she strips away the unreal to show us the real. This is the true ride. Let's give ourselves to it. So may you feel resourced so you can wake up, not be so shocked by change, not take it so personally, so you can grieve losses fully and give yourself to the ride. Thank you.